TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. This is The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. Good morning, 2016. TalkTainmentRadio.com, we go where you go. The greatest radio, the world's greatest radio. You're in touch now with the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I'm your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. If you'd like to get in contact with this show, um, don't call right now. I will give you the signal to call in. Uh, we have to get a little business out of the way first, and then we will uh, take your calls and read some of the emails if we can get to them. So I'll give you the number in just a few uh, moments here, and then we can go from there. Uh, listen, uh, we just have a, an updated um, announcement concerning the, do- the donations. Now, here you go. Now, pay attention because I'm going to read this uh, once here, maybe once in the next half hour. Uh, if you're going to send donations, send it. Make your uh, money order or blank or, or excuse me or bank check to K and E World Network, Post Office Box sixty one eighty four, Columbus Ohio four three two zero six. Care of the compensatory concept. Let me say that again. Make it payable to K and E World Network. Post Office Box 6184, Columbus, Ohio, 43206, in care of the compensatory concept. Now, we will accept a money order or bank check only, no personal checks, and then we will email you your receipt, and all donations are final. Now, the purpose is to extend the compensatory concept for one additional hour, making it a two-hour program. Our goal is to cover one year's worth of programming. You asked for it, so now it's up to you. The purpose is to extend the compensatory concept for uh, one additional hour, making it a two-hour program, and our goal is to cover one year's worth of programming. So I will read that again. Later in the uh, in the show, okay. Let me introduce to some and uh, present to others, Mister Nearly Fuller Jr. And then after he has his uh, say or open, and then we will get to your phone calls. I will give you the numbers how to get in contact with the show. So don't call right now because we're not going to answer the phones until Mister Fuller gets finished. Uh, Mister Nearly Fuller Jr. Mister Fuller, how how are you this morning? I'm still learning. You are still learning. Okay. Uh, we'd like to start out the 2016 uh, year by your observations or things that you have on your mind that you want to address. Well, I'll address, the uh, first of all, the passing of Dr. Wilson, Francis Wilson. Uh, some people may be familiar with her. Other people may not. So I would uh, see... She uh, passed away uh, as a result of a massive stroke. Uh, I think it was New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm not absolutely certain of the exact time. So uh, she is often referred to my work as being an inspiration for her to look into the racial situation and she has produced a body of work based on her perspective on that particular issue, which she agreed with me that that
that is the major issue of the entire planet, and she has her own perspective of it, of mostly dealing with the why this all evolved into what it is today, as in the minds of many people, myself included, the world's biggest problem. So, but she is no longer among the existing people now on the planet. She left quite suddenly. So some people may or may not know that. And uh, my recommendation is when anyone has been here on the planet and they're no longer here, uh, and people want to think in terms of the person, you think in terms of the person if you're going to put them in memory, which is what uh, memory is a very important thing in anything, in any setting having memory. So what purpose does memory serve? So you try to remember things that can be used. I mean, in among the people who are here when someone is no longer here, if you're going to remember something in the form of a person, you remember things about the person that you think may be important to you while you're here on the planet. So that would mean her work. A lot of people may have focused on her as a personality because we're in a kind of personality-driven world. And this is okay. There's no harm in that. But I think she would like to be remembered for what she was trying to do. And And so she was trying to analyze the why. That's what she always told me in most of our conversations and in listening to most of her work. She was analyzing why we have this problem called race and the cause of it. There's a cause for everything that exists. What is the cause of it? That's most of what she focused on. And so I would recommend that since that was her focus and people who want to remember her would not remember her just as a name or a face or a personality, but what Dr. Francis Cress Wilson was trying to do, and what she always said she was trying to do, was make an accurate assessment of the why we have this thing called, quote, unquote, a race problem. Yes, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. Very, very good. Okay, the phone lines are now going to open, and this is how you can do it. You can dial one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at seven Mr Bobby at gmail dot com, and uh, we will see what we can do. That's one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six. Phone lines are now open, or you can Gmail me at seven Mr Bobby at uh, gmail uh, dot com, and uh, we will try and. Uh, uh, get your um, question uh, answered, uh, or uh, at least uh, addressed. Mr. Fuller, we have a question from, I can, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name, but the question is, how does the information in your book affect children who have a white parent and a non-white parent? How does it affect children who have a white parent and a non-white parent? Yes. I don't know. I've never looked right into that. I don't know the effect of that. Uh, I have talked to people who are in these situations, so they would know better than anyone what the effect is. Because in a system that is designed to mistreat people of color, that's what the system of white supremacy is for, to dominate and mistreat anyone who has color in his or her skin, that's the purpose for it this thing called white supremacy. So now if you have a white person, so-called married to a non-white person, they would know more about what dilemma that causes than anyone. I say, from my perspective, it causes something that helps the white supremacists because it causes what? Confusion. That's been my observation. Mm -hmm. It adds to the confusion. Sexual intercourse between a white person and a non-white person in the system of white supremacy adds to the confusion. 
Sexual intercourse brings about the productive the production of offspring. So the offspring comes up saying, I am sometimes terms like I'm half white and half black. There's no such thing as that. You can't be half white and half black. You're either white or you're black in the system of racism. That's the way the racism works. You're one or the other. There's no such thing as a mixed race. Okay. Race is racism. Race is something that you do. It's not something that you are. It's something that you do. If you practice racism, you're racist. If you're a member of a race, you're racist. Black people in the system of white supremacy cannot be racist, even if they want to be. Why? Because racism is white supremacy. You can't have two supremes at the same time. It doesn't work. There's no such thing as two supremes in anything. Any one thing, that is. You can have a supreme apple or a supreme orange, but you can't have two supreme apples. I mean, it's going to be one or the other if you're going to put it in the in the circle of supremacy. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of understanding what racism is and what it isn't. And, and, and so you only have one people who can become racist in a system of white supremacy, mm-hmm. and that is a white person. So going back to the opening statement that you make uh, consistently when you open up the show, which is uh, to understand racism, what is it that you always say if you do not understand white supremacy? If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will confuse you. Yes, okay. So See, I guess that, this... that key term there is confusion. Yes, sir. See, the racists thrive on confusion. You can't dominate and mistreat people on a very efficient basis unless you confuse them. And black people, the people who are the victims of white supremacy, are the most confused people on earth right now as we speak. The second part of that question, um, I think you already answered, but it says what effect does it have on the child's relationship with the non-white parent? Well, I think you already said, since you're not in it, you really don't know. Okay, let's go to the phone lines. Line number one, you are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Mr. Fuller. I'd just like to say I'm very broken up about the death of Dr. Frances Cress Wilson. And I saw her when she was in Sacramento, and I was planning on having her autograph a brand new book for me, but to my surprise, they didn't have any of her books when she spoke, but I had your book with me, and she autographed that. So I would like to know, can I get an autographed copy of your book? Well, I uh, usually autograph uh, copies when I am uh, at a bookstore or something like that, and I'm no longer traveling, so I'm very seldom at a bookstore. And I usually don't autograph uh, otherwise, uh, because one thing, the books are not... I used to handle all of the books myself directly and uh, without anyone else, one else involved. But now I am on the Internet. I wasn't always on the Internet, so the books are handled through the Internet now. So uh, I did away with the autographed uh, ceremonies. Uh, for the most part. Also, Mr. Fuller, I'm curious about Dr. Cress Wilson's funeral. Do you have any information on it? Say that again? I'm curious about Dr. Cress Wilson's funeral. Do you have any information on it? No, I don't have any information. Right. Uh, That will probably be made public at some other time. That's what I've been told. And, Mr. Fuller, I would like to get a picture with you. Is there... Y'all do speaking anymore? I'm very upset I can't get a picture with you in an autograph. Say that again? Doc, well, I consider you and Dr. Chris Wilson two of the greatest minds in my lifetime. And I would love to get a picture with you and an autograph. Well, a lot of people say that, but actually that's not kind of in line with what I do. I call my uh, the code system 
the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. And a lot of people kind of associate uh, me, the way many people associate people, uh, as a personality, uh, you know, a personality focus, you might say. Uh, what I do is more like, I, I like to say more like, uh, I'm just a student of mathematics, you might say. And so if you go to school to study mathematics, you're not studying the mathematics teacher. The teacher shouldn't be the focus. Coming out of the school able to do mathematics is the focus. See, if I went to an auto mechanic school, I'm not going there to get my picture taken with the president of the school. That's not my purpose for going to the school. See, it's not like show business where you, everything is personality driven. Counter racist science is about getting a job done. So it doesn't make any difference who's getting the job done. Just get the job done. In fact, the person who is supposed to be doing the job is not supposed to be even considered as anything at all. Anybody that you would want to get your picture taken with, unless they are actually doing the job. The job of, of replacing racism with justice hasn't been done by anybody. So there are absolutely really no stars in that show. None. Zero. Why? Because the job hasn't been done. That's why. All right. Thank you uh, for your call. Uh, let's see. Talk Tainment Radio is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility that have hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, health, wellness, religion, politics, and here's one I'd like to share with you. It's called Men Speaks, and you can join hosts Richard Lundy and Brother Kamari as they discuss the issues that are relevant to the lives of black men. You won't want to miss these no-hold-barred, uh, riveting conversations that are designed to stir the intellect and the ambitions of black men in the diaspora. Broadcast on Tuesdays exclusively on TalkTeamAtRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host of The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller, Jr., who's online now. And if you'd like to call in, you can by calling one 932 9766 or you can Gmail me at 7 Bobby at gmail. Dot com. Let's go to the phone lines and uh, line number two. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Line Hello, number. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I have uh, just real quick two questions. The first one is um, dealing with the police is a, is a big problem, as we know, especially for the youth. And I've heard you uh, advocate not to. Uh, stand up to them. Now, my question is, even in my experience, is if you stand up to them using their constitutional law, they sort of, uh, they get, like, stunned. They get, like, uh, shell-shocked. They don't know how to respond because most of these men and women in the street, uh, they don't even know the law. So I, I notice they actually give you a form of respect if you do it calmly and you just start blurting out their codes and what they're doing is wrong, and to the point where they actually <clears throat> they leave you alone, they even let you go. So I'm just wondering, would you advocate this? What I have always tell, told people, because I do it myself, uh, I see those lights, usually it happens, or many times it happens if you're driving a vehicle or something like that. That's when the average person is likely to have some, uh, what you might call, everyday encounter with a law enforcement official, a person with a badge and a gun. And so that's, that gun means, that, that firearm means that's sudden death. All right, so that's what you're, you should have a mindset that you could die within the next five minutes. Once, you know, five minutes after you see those blinking lights in your rearview mirror, you could be dead if you're black. You have to have that mindset. I can, you know, I'm on my way to the grocery store. But you have, should have it in mind. Uh-oh, I see those blinking lights in my rearview mirror. 
I'm not going to make it to the drugstore. Put that in your mind. Put that in your mind. I'm not going to make it. I am under the threat of death right now, whether I realize it or not, that everything is going to be over. People are going to be calling all over town asking what happened to me. You have to have that in mind. I'm saying that's the way the world is. That's the real world. So having that in mind, what I would do and what I advocate that everybody does, do what you are told. That is not the place to go on stage and start making your point, showing how much you know about everything. That's not that's not a uh, that's not a collegiate setting of that type. It's a collegiate setting, all right. I mean, it is a school, but this is not the place to go in some type of theatrics. Black people often use this word drama. This is not the place for drama. This is sudden death you're looking at. Don't play with it. So I have three things. Don't fuss. Don't fight. And don't flee. You can take care of all of this later on in a quieter and calmer setting where you have witnesses to whatever is going on. It's usually called a courtroom sitting there calmly in chairs saying, now, what was it that happened that should not have happened? What you don't want to do is do something, making a speech. I call it showing off. But that showing off is going to cost you everything, meaning you are going to be lying in the streets dead, most likely. Don't defy that person. You are an enemy soldier, been captured in enemy territory. And anybody who knows anything about enemy soldiers being caught behind enemy lines that's the way you have to look at it, is subject to be dead instantly. We have to cement that in our brains. Otherwise, like I've always said, this stuff is going to continue to happen. Because most likely it's going to continue to happen anyway, because we don't understand what situation we're in. We've got to stop playing. This is no game. It's not school ground games. It's not ghetto games. This is real. Your yeah. subject be dead. Yes. What is your second question? Quickly, please. Uh, and that leads me up to what he was just saying, where where black people seem to be in Stockholm syndrome, man, uh, around my area. You can have the facts right in front of them that we're in a prison, that we're enemy behind the lines, on and on and on. They just don't get it. So, it, it, you, like you said, I've heard in previous uh, uh, posts, uh, that you say you just avoid them, correct? Yes, try not to even attract attention by doing something that attracts attention. There's some people, I mean, that walk around, I mean, you know, uh, saying, hey, I'm going to do something to attract their attention, and then I'm going to try to figure it out as I go along about how I'm going to save my life. That is not sophisticated strategy at all. Hmm. All righty. Thank you for your call. I uh, want to go to the email. Um, uh, Mitro, I'm going to ask or have Mr. Fuller address your issue. Uh, it's about uh, the uh, book. And Mr. Fuller, uh, can you or would you explain the the procedure on getting your book, where to go to, and all that has to be done? This is the only way that, uh, and in the proper way to get the book. Mr. Fuller? ProduceJustice.com. If you want to get the book, the textbook for victims of white supremacy and the word guide, the counter racist word guide, uh, just two books there on that site. Uh, most people get the basic book. Some people get both. You go to producejustice.com. Just, just that simple. And what will come up on the screen is a brief description of both books, very brief description. I'll try to make it more elaborate later on. But a brief description of both books and the method for ordering. That's ProduceJustice.com. And I'd like to say something about the, the first statement that was made in the introduction of this program this morning. That is about the donations. These donations do not go to me. They have to do with the station. 
I don't get. I'm, I don't have any kind of financial arrangement with this station at all. I just come on the station by electronic hookup. Yes, but I, but I am not connected with the collection of money. No one donates money to Neely Fuller. I have nothing to do with put money in my pocket that comes from the station. Uh, I don't know anything about that. So this is in connection with keeping the station uh, on the air and. By the station being on the air and having the money to do it, they can give me more time on there. That's the exactly. understanding that I have heard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no money is sent to Neely Fuller like, well, this is money to help Neely Fuller out. I mean, in his everyday comings and goings, and he can go out and buy a car or something like No, no, I don't get any money at all. I sell books. That is my where I get the money that's connected with what I do. And I try to produce a quality product hopefully and that's you know that's the uh where i get an income as far as what i do is concerned okay and since you went there let me give the uh how you the listener can can make the donation to the uh compensatory concept heard exclusively on talk team and radio you need to make your checks or money orders Payable to, and these are bank checks, by the way, K&E World Network, Post Office Box 6184, Columbus, Ohio, 43206, in care of the compensatory concept. Now, we will accept money orders or a bank check. No personal checks. And then the station will email you your receipt and all donations are final. Now, the purpose is to extend the compensatory concept for and an additional hour, making it a two hour program. Our goal is to cover one year of programming. Now, people have asked me about this. Uh, I think it was in September. There were been, there's been a lot of calls, a lot of inquiry about the compensatory concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller Jr. going for uh, two hours because sometimes, or most of the time, we just can't get all of the calls in. And we wanted to do this, and I did speak with Mr. Fuller about it, and he has no problem with it. I have no problem with it, and the station doesn't have any problem with it. What they wanted to do was was connect all the dots and and uh, cross all the T's and so forth to get everything lined up for the proper way that you, since you wanted this, so that you could have the proper channel on doing this. And as Mr. Fuller said, none of this money that we collect will go to him. None of it. He has nothing whatsoever to do with it. So don't don't send it to him. Send it to us at K and E World Network. Post Office Box 6184, Columbus, Ohio, 43206, in care of the uh, compensatory concept, and then we will do what we have to do on that. So now you are uh, you are up to date uh, on that information. Uh, okay, where are we at, DeGalen? Uh, we are, oh, okay. You know what? We are going to be taking a, st- oh, yeah, here it is. We're at the 29 break. Listen. TalkTeamAtRadio.com. We go where you go. Check us out on WCRS FM 98.3 Wednesdays and Sunday evenings. Blogs and podcasts are available. And you can download the TalkTeamAtRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Stay right there. Coming up next, we have more of your questions and the phone lines are jammed, so we will be able to get with you. one 932 9766 with Mr. Nilly Fuller Jr. on the compensatory concept heard exclusively on TalkTamedRadio.com.
TalkTainmentRadio.com is the premier Internet radio platform offering 40-plus talk radio-style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio on-air personalities. TalkTainmentRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life, and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal history. Tell them that all in our family sense. Don't forget the word. Word automotive sense. 614-237-5171. That's 614-237-5171. I wasn't prepared to be a caregiver to mom. But a little over a year ago, we realized she couldn't take care of herself without our help. And, well, how could I not be there for her? I had no idea how hard it would be and just what I would need to know. Things I never thought of, like how to improve her mood and, even for me, ways to stay positive. Luckily, I found the Caregiving Resource Center from AARP. It had articles about the basics that got me started, but also information about the hurdles I was facing in this new role. I could even connect with experts and hear from others who had been in my place. I know this road we're on isn't an easy one, but I'm really happy to have the extra help for her and for me. Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Articles, tips, and tools to help you both care for your loved one and care for yourself. This message is brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Have you thought about what you want or what gift to give this Christmas? Not really. I hadn't even thought about it. Well, a great Christmas gift would be an old-school Western Caribbean cruise on November 12, 2016. Featuring Kahari Free at Last from Bounce 23 TV. That's a great idea. Enjoying two trips in one, a post-cruise vacation in New Orleans, and a five-day Western Caribbean cruise aboard the Carnival Triumph. Price from $352. Reserve now, only $25 deposit. Deadline, January 29, 2016. Call Special Events and Tours at 740-927-6551. What's that number again? 740-927-6551. Reserve now, only $25 deposit. Hello, this is the Kahari Free at Last Cruise. You must be ready to sign up. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock. And it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped. Childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. My suit can still make an impression. And my lamp can bring others a bright future. Because when I donate my stuff to Goodwill, it helps fund job placement and training for people right in my community. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461. 202-484-5461. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. Go ahead. Make my day. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't.
can't handle the truth. You got the power. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go. Download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And if you would like to get in contact with the show, you can by calling 1-877-932-9766. And before we go to the phone one more time, uh, if you'd like to get a copy of the uh, book or the word guide, I'm going to have Mr. Fuller uh, say where you can get that information. Mr. Fuller? ProduceJustice.com. Just go to ProduceJustice.com. That's like product. You're trying to produce a uh, produce, ProduceJustice.com. And what will come up on the screen is a method for ordering the textbook for victims of white supremacy. Okay, let's go to line number three. Line number three, you are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Uh, Mr. Fuller, I'd like to say thank you for telling black people not to get dramatical when the police encounter them. I always thought it was amazing that various events in my life has made me cross paths with um, real Nero Nazis from Germany and with Italian gangsters, okay? And both groups, they know when the police stops them, they could come up dead. And in spite of their activities, they will get quiet and humble when the police stops them. They're not going to put on no drama act. They know they can come up dead. Unlike what you see in those old Godfather-type movies, the Italians don't behave like that around the police. First, they have an extensive knowledge of the police that will blow your mind. And they know when the police stops them, that's not the time to get loud. That's not the time to get dramatical. That's not the time to play with the police. They know that. These are people who've been dealing with police forces on a global scale. They know that. When the police stops them, you'll be amazed at how quiet and humble and cooperative they get because they are trying to survive the encounter. So thank you for telling black people that. All righty. Thank you for your comment. Um, Mr. Fuller, uh, I have a comment or rather uh, a question and this person does not want me to read his name or a hometown publicly but he did have a question for you he said mr fuller um my director informed me that i have to get a flu shot or be fired he says that he works in it at a hospital and they seem to be ignoring the exemption for religious reasons what does the code suggest well, you're going to have to go according to what are the what are the what the laws are in wherever you are. Find out what the laws are, and state your case based on the laws. That's what I would do because I wouldn't have any other option. I'm, I'm employed, and they have rules, or what you call laws. I I don't like that word rules. I always ask people when I was in job situations, uh, are these rules laws? Because a lot of people make up rules on on uh, paper napkins, I mean, while they're at lunch. Some supervisors would do that. They just make up a rule and say, this is the rule. This is the rule we're going to go by. But is it constitutional? So what you do, you always, on any job situation, you go to the 5th and 14th Amendment in the Northwestern Hemisphere. The 5th and 14th Amendment, those are your best amendments for getting things done that should be done in the best manner when it comes to, if there's anything that you can do, the production of justice. That's what I believe in. The Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, uh, that's about, uh, what is the Fifth? It's about compensation, and it's also about due process, meaning going about doing everything the correct way. And the Fourteenth is about equal protection. It's everybody treated this way, without exception, without any exception. 
all right? And so you put those two together, the due process meaning, did you go about doing this the correct way? You threatened to fire me. I mean, but did you go about, did you consider constitutional issues when you threatened to fire me? Because we're all supposed to be beholden in the Northwestern Hemisphere under what they call the United States Constitution to that Constitution, not to any persons or any company rules or regulations and whatnot. I mean, this is all well and good because you have to have those. But the bottom line is when it comes to justice, when it comes to whether somebody is going to be persecuted or prosecuted or given some type of advantage, you want to know, is it in line with the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States? And other than that, you really don't have much going for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are at that mercy. So it becomes a, but you do have First Amendment religious rights. So you look into every part of that and find out, is that going to be violated? Because that might be a constitutional violation. I don't know. But oh. you, you, you go in that direction. You mm -hmm. can cite also, since you mentioned that this is connected with your religion or with that person's religion, you can raise the First Amendment. Go and read the First Amendment. You don't have to read the entire Constitution, just the amendment. Most of the amendments to the Constitution are very short. There's not a lot of words there. So hmm. just read that First Amendment hmm. and then go with that. Okay. He says the reason why he feels this way, he was factoring in the many precedents of the government mistreating non-whites under the disguise of helping. And then he uses the uh, Tuskegee experiment, uh, measles in blankets and et cetera. Uh, most of us know about the Tuskegee experiment and then just recently – the government came out and admitted that during World War II that they did subject uh, uh, the non-white uh, soldiers in some instances to some type of testing that they did, and they finally admitted that. So I, I don't know if this is what he is uh, uh, afraid of, but um, you have told him what he needs to do. That is the f f first, fifth, thirteenth, and fourteenth amendments. Yes, that's the first, first amendment. Okay. First Amendment and the Fifth and the Fourteenth. Okay. And in this particular case. Okay. And those particular. are the ones to look at. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's go to line number three. You are now, no, excuse me, line number one. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Greetings to everyone on the, um, on the line. Uh, my question uh, to Mr. Fuller is uh, basically uh, his uh Compensatory uh, suggestions and or thoughts on what is commonly called community meetings. They normally are are uh, put on as a result to uh, different uh, tragedies that takes place in areas where non-white people are allowed to stay, uh, such as uh, police killings, uh, uh, non-white black people killing uh, each other. Uh, and uh, uh, the the mayor of that area is normally there, the police chief with police officers, preachers, and all of them speak and, and have a different spiel of speaking, and then they allow the people who are allowed to stay in the area to speak. What is your codified uh, response and or suggestions uh, about these uh community meetings. Okay, thank you for your question. Mr. Fuller? It depends on who is organizing, quote, unquote, the meeting and what has been said that the meeting is for. You always measure everything by what something is for. If you go to a garage uh, where they repair cars, presumably you're going there to get your car repaired. So the purpose for going to a rep auto repair shop is to come out with a vehicle that has been repaired. So uh, in order to not just keep having meetings where, and, and I've been to many of them, where you have a long meeting, a two- or three-hour meeting, and then the only thing that is agreed on is to have another meeting. And then at the, ne at the next meeting, 
the only thing that is agreed on is to have another meeting. And so we, we, uh, someone said back in the 1960s that black people are the meetingest people in the world, but they never do nothing. <laughs> uh, that was a black male who was really kind of inebriated that made a very true statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, And so it comes down to, I, I suggest, anyone who calls a meeting should be able to say in advance what the result is going to be. Uh, state that before you even call people. Mm-hmm. Just don't say we're going to have a meeting and we're going to do something. No. Mm-hmm. Tell the people what you expect the result of that meeting to be. And if the meeting does not produce that result, then the meeting was a failure. Okay. TalkTamedRadio.com. We go where you go. Download the TalkTamedRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller, Jr. And if you would like to get in contact with the show, you may do so by calling one 932 9766 or you can Gmail me at 7 Mr. Bobby at gmail.com. Now, I'm not sure I can get to all the Gmails today. But anyway, uh, line number two, you are on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and what is your question? Yes, greetings, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Fuller. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, first, of all, first, of, first of all, I would like to give my condolences to Dr. Francis Wilson's family friends, and extended family. Uh, She was the first person to actually open my eyes and taught me to see things and hear things in a different way. And then I later found out about her mentor, which she spoke about much, and that is Mr. Fuller. And he gave me more clarity as I continue to listen. Uh, I have two questions. One, Mr. Fuller, are you currently talking to us in code? And my last question, I'll leave it at this. Do you believe it's too late to implement your code? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Fuller? Yes, I'm talking in code and the whole purpose for me talking. And they tell me I might get extended on this program to do more talk, and it is to accomplish what I am writing and what I'm talking about, which is what? To replace the system, the entire system of white supremacy with a better system. And what would that better system be? A system of justice. No point in replacing racism with something else that is destructive or harmful to people. I'm trying to get rid of some harm. Racism is very, very harmful. So that's what this code, see, when I say code, code is just a means of doing things. Just like I outlined a few things, people have asked me about law enforcement encounters and all like that. Don't fuss. Don't fight. Don't flee. That's implementation. You use the word implementation. Yes, this is code. It's not a secret code. A code just means getting things done that need to be done. What's the best way to get things done? Well, there's some things that you do, some things that you don't do. So that illustration I just gave. And then it should be a code for everything. That's what I'm trying to get people to center on. You have to codify everything. Everything that you do and everything that you say. And when I say you, I mean every person on the planet, each and every day, is going to produce a result. I don't care what you do. If you get on a bus, you're getting on the bus to do what? To go somewhere. Okay, where are you going? And what are you going to do when you get there? And the main thing is going, whatever you do that day, wherever you arrive, your destination, you're going to do something when you arrive. And that doing is going to be what? It's going to produce a result. And that result is going to be what? It's going to be something constructive or non-constructive. 
There's no such thing as in between. Even if you're sitting down to eat a meal, that's a code. There's a code for eating a meal. And that code says what? When you put whatever's in that plate in your stomach, it's going to produce a result. It's either going to help your body or it's going to hurt your body. That's the way we have to learn to think. Codify everything so you always get the best and most constructive result. That is what my work is about. Mm -hmm. And yes, we should be implementing it. We're supposed to be implementing that right now. That's not something projected for 15 years from now or three months from now or even tomorrow. The reason I'm talking right now is all about problem solving because that's what every code is supposed to be about. If Neely Fuller is not helping to solve a problem, then Neely Fuller is not doing anything at all and shouldn't be paid attention to. I'll Hmm. say that flat out. Okay. Uh, Let's go to line number three. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Mr. Fuller, when can we expect your second book to come to the market? Well, uh, my expectations had been, you know, uh, going back at least five years. And I have become very, very recently frustrated. And that's not supposed, that's something that's not supposed to happen. Frustration means you've gotten to the place where you're incompetent and you don't know what you're doing. That's what that means. That's where frustration is. Anytime you're frustrated, it means you don't know what to do. You're trying to do something and you don't know what to do. I'm trying to eliminate that, I mean, with record speed. But I've given people so many answers to that question, starting with about six years ago, really going back as far back as 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But about six years ago, I started saying, well, it'll be in December. Well, it'll be in next February. Now I'm saying, I'll just get it done when I get it done, because I keep having dilemma that seem to be, for some reason, can't be overcome. This reason coming up, that reason coming up. So um, hopefully it will be sometimes the early part of this year. Okay. Right. Thank you for your question, dear. Okay, uh, let's go to the phone lines. one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six. in the remaining moments. Uh, caller number one, you are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., Hello good, hello, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Neely Fuller. Uh, uh, yeah, my question is, uh, why uh, is Mr. Fuller uh, 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 so smart? And uh, why uh, is Mr. Fuller the first person in history uh, who figures out uh, uh, who figures out uh, uh, what is racism uh, and what supremacy? Why? Mr. Fuller? I do not understand the Are question. you the first person in history to to uh, to address racism, caller? Is that is is that your question? Uh, 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 no, uh, no. My question is why uh, is Mr. Fuller the first person uh, who figured out how how racism and uh, was how uh, it works? Uh, 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 I mean, what I mean, what is racism and how? Uh, 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 it works. What is racism, and how, are, why is Mr. Fuller, or how is Mr. Fuller the first person to figure out racism, what it is, and how it works? And no, and no, why, why is Mr. Fuller the first person, and how he became the first person to do that? Oh, okay. Why is he okay, Mr. Fuller? I'm not. I haven't figured it out. I'm trying to figure it out, but I say that the way to figure it out is through logic. We haven't been, we're trying to been, we're trying to deal with racism, in my opinion. The people who have gone up against it have tried to do it completely with, with, uh, emotion. Black people even brag about how emotional we are. We, we call it soul. We call it feelings. And this is how we approach problem solving. The white supremacists laugh at that. Now, emotions do serve a purpose, but emotions are supposed to lead us the universal law, which is logic. Logic is mean, and you figure out the cause and effect for everything that happens. Fire will burn. Water is wet. You figure out why fire burns, why water is wet. 
then you start getting to the essence of things. Racism is the same way. You can't solve a problem without understanding the problem. And we just go about blindly, just putting on a blindfold and just think that we're running up and down the street, screaming and yelling and clapping our hands and singing and whatnot, will somehow magically solve the race problem. No, you have to meticulously look at everything, look at what people do. I mean, the fine things that they do, the little small things that they do that add up to the big things. Yes. Talk to people, and more than anything, ask questions about the use of words. Ask questions about when someone says something, say, wait a minute, stop talking so fast. That's the first thing. Watch that fast talk. Slow mm-hmm. down and go through every word that that person is saying. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, at a snail's pace. Then you get understanding, because you can't solve a problem without understanding. Okay. Thank you for your call, caller. Line number two, you are now on with, with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Yes, hello. Good morning. I'm Tariq from the Bronx. Happy New Year. And um, my condolences to Mrs. Wilson's family on her passing, as well as Mr. Fuller. I know she was a great student of yours. But my question to Mr. Fuller is um, about the whole Bill Cosby situation. Um, my in insight on it is that uh, he was trying to purchase a news company or a, uh, a uh, news broadcasting network in general, um, preferably a NBC News, and he was going to use this channel to uh, perpetuate positive black um, images and media, um, and this is why they, they uh, set up these allegations against him 40, 30, 20 years after the alleged um, incident. I just wanted to know Mr. Fuller's take on this, and um, is this a strategy of the white supremacists to bring down one of um, the people who are trying to uh, take apart the system. Thank you, Tyreek. Mr. Fuller? Well, I don't know enough about the case, and, uh, you know, a jury will decide what the case is really all about or the number of cases that I've heard about and all like that. But to, I will say what the code always says about anything that has to do with a black person who is in trouble or a black person who is not in trouble, and that is to the extent that a white supremacist has anything to do with what a black person does, and a white supremacist has something to do with everything that a black person does in a system of white supremacy, then the the white supremacists are up to something that's going to give strength to the system of white supremacy. A white person that believes in racism is always going to do something to give strength to racism. And that means they have to give weakness to a black person. Hmm. They have to make a black person weak. They have to take something away from a black person. They have to have a black person under siege. This is what white supremacy does. This is what it's for. This is what they invented it for. That's an invention. Dominate and mistreat black people and bait them into situations where they will be caught in a situation that's to their disadvantage. I mean, they start working on them from the time we are born. That includes every black person on the planet. From the time you're born, the white supremacist is laying out your entire existence. Yes. Where are you going to work? How are you going to make your money? Who you are going to have sex with? And how they are going to work that sexual thing against you at any point that they want to. Okay, well... You hear the music, so you know we've come to the end of the program. But let me get this quickly out. Any donations, you can make it to k and World Network, Post Office Box 6184, Columbus, Ohio, 43206, in care of the compensatory concept with Mr. Uh, uh, compensatory concept. We accept money orders or blank or bank checks, no personal checks, and we will email you your receipt. All donations are final. And the purpose is to extend the compensatory concept for one and additional hour, making it a two-hour program. Our goal is to cover one year worth of programming. TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. We'll see you next week. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always... TalkTainmentRadio.